Let's talk about how much money you can make blogging. When I started blogging in 2015, everyone told me that blogging was dead. But since that time, I've made over $10 million through this blog, Millennial Money. There's a number of different ways that you can make money blogging. And I'm gonna walk through the top 15 ways to make money in a second. But I wanna share a little bit about my story. It took me about a thousand hours of work before I made my first $100,000 blogging. It's really a slog up front, setting up your blog, picking your domain, writing your first post. If you follow my content for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of search engine optimization. So I made sure that all the technical elements of the website were correct. But thankfully now there are so many different tools that you can use that make things like ranking on Google a lot easier. There are many plugins. There's simple plug and play ways to launch new websites and change templates. And so if you're interested in a topic and you wanna make money writing about that topic and you're passionate about it, I encourage you to think about blogging as a potential side hustle or business venture. So how much money you can make blogging really depends on what industry you're writing in. So if you have a blog about your garden and you're really passionate about gardening and you're gonna write about all of your tips and tricks and how you're growing your garden, there are a number of ways you can make money through a gardening blog, but you're not gonna be able to make as much money as say writing a money or a finance blog. The biggest reason is that the advertisers who are interested in getting in front of a gardening audience or the products that you can recommend like gardening books or shovels uh, through affiliate links tend to be less expensive than say on a finance blog where you can recommend an investing service or an app and get a larger fee once someone signs up through your blog. When I started my blog, I actually knew nothing about this. And as you can see deeper in this post, exactly how much you can expect to make per thousand visitors, depending upon the niche that you're interested in. I wanted to share that there are so many different ways that you can make money blogging, and many of them when I got started, I had no idea about. Not only did I naively not know that you could make money writing about money, I had no idea there were so many different ways. I just thought that I could maybe make money with some display ads on the side of the website, or maybe linking to a couple of products. But here are the 15 ways that I've made money blogging on Millennial Money, which ultimately led me to selling the website in 2020, and then recently reacquiring it back in July of 2022. This has by far been the most profitable business venture of my life, and I'm gonna share some of the ways that I've made money. The first way that you can make money blogging is through Google advertising or what's known now as Google ads. The simple idea is that you create a blog and then you insert a pixel which shows display ads on the website based on someone's interest. You can expect to earn between 10 cents and 50 cents per click when someone clicks on these ads. And while it's an easy way to make money without having to do much, it's by far the least amount of income that you can make blogging, especially when you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of website traffic. Historically, this was the number one way that people monetized websites, but now it's starting to lose favor because there are so many different, more lucrative ways that you can monetize your audience. Number two, you can join an advertiser or publishing network. There are companies like AdThrive and Mediavine and Ezoic which functions similarly to Google ads, but they pay you more per impression and more per click. Some of these platforms will show a video on your website. You've probably seen these when surfing online, a pop-up banner. These ads, because they tend to be a little bit more targeted, pay you a bit more money, and these networks are then incentivized to go out and sell the advertising space for you. Oftentimes, there's a minimum traffic threshold that they have, and it's quite high. You need between 20 and 25,000 page views on your website often before being able to join one of these publisher networks. This is often the second step 
that new bloggers take once they reach that level in order to make a bit more money per impression for the ads on their website. Of course, you probably know on Millennial Money that you don't see any of these ads at all. And this is because they're not nearly as profitable as performance marketing, which I'm going to get into in a second. They also tend to be annoying. I don't like pop-up ads or seeing videos. And so I know that my audience and you likely don't wanna see those, but that's the second most popular way that people now monetize their blogs. Number three is affiliate ads. So this is also known as performance marketing. This is when you promote someone else's product and then when a user takes a designed action, you get paid for that action. A simple example, if you've surfed through Millennial Money and you've seen a link to Acorn's investing app, every time that someone clicks through that and signs up for Acorn's, I'm getting $30. And so that's just one example that has really unlimited scale. At one point, I worked with 400 different brands on Millennial Money, and this is one of those things where you write one blog post and then it starts ranking well on Google and you have a few of these companies that you're recommending. You've only had to write the blog post once and then every time someone comes through Google and then signs up for one of the services, you're making money. The most profitable post on Millennial Money averaged about $2,000 of profit per day for me at its height. And I wrote that blog post you know, in February of 2016, and then it continued to make me money over the following five years. When you average that out, that blog post made me over $3 million, and I only had to write it once. Of course, that's a really extreme example, and not all of your blog posts are going to make you $2,000 a day, but affiliate marketing, also known as performance marketing, is by far, in my opinion, the most profitable way to monetize a blog, no matter what industry that you're in. I gave the example of writing a garden blog and how it's not likely gonna be as profitable as a finance blog, but you can recommend so many types of products and services if you're in a different niche. One piece of advice, make sure that you've used or use or believe in the products that you recommend on your blog the fastest way to lose trust with your audience is to promote something that you can't stand behind and you don't believe in just for a little extra money. Number four is sponsored content. When you've built up an audience, a brand who wants to target that audience might pay you for a blog post or to be a sponsor of your website or to put a display ad or to sponsor an email. The fees can vary between $100 for a brand mention all the way up to $100,000 for a larger sponsored content campaign. This is something that I knew nothing about when I started blogging but ended up making up about 30% of Millennial Money's revenue. You always wanna have a media kit for your blog which outlines simple things like your core audience demographic and how much website traffic you get and what your engagement is and then you can send that out to people who are interested in sponsoring some content on your website and also respond to people who reach out to you. So sponsored content is a very profitable way to monetize your audience. Number five is a direct ad buy. So sometimes instead of sponsoring content, a brand will reach out and very specifically say, I wanna be on this post. And so you can sell them a placement on that post for a fee. It wasn't unrealistic for a brand to reach out and pay me $5,000 just to put a banner on one post for a month to test out whether or not it was worth investing in a larger campaign. Number six is social media promotion. So just like brands wanna reach your blog audience, they likely wanna reach your social media audience as well. This is something that when I started growing my following on social media, I had no idea that I'd be able to do and I'd always be surprised when a brand would reach out and offer to pay me to mention their product or to review their product. And so, of course, this has grown immensely in the influencer economy, and now it's not unheard of for a TikTok influencer to get twenty dollars or $50,000 to mention a product. This is something that even with a smaller micro audience, you can take advantage of because you've built up a trusted audience on your blog. 
Number seven is paid social media content promotion. So just like a brand can pay you to post about their brand, there's been a few brand partnerships that I did where a brand actually paid to link up their brand to my account and then run an ad campaign to it. There are brands that will reach out to you and will wanna run partnership Instagram ads or TikTok ads, and that's something that I didn't even know was possible when I first started blogging. Number eight is online courses. This is something over the past several years that has grown exponentially, and now if you follow someone on social media or read their blog, you likely see that they have a course that they promote. Maybe it's free, maybe it's $97. Maybe you've seen My Financial Freedom and Uncertain Times course. The great thing about a course, especially an online course, is that it's a digital product. You invest the time up front to create it, but then if you integrate it within your content and your email campaigns, it can continue selling without you. In fact, I make thousands of dollars a week on my online course and I don't have to do anything. I'm also able to add extra value to the readers who wanna go deeper into the content and it gives me the ability to teach a broad group of people all over the world who are interested in my content. You can start very easily through a platform like Kajabi or Teachable or Thinkific and get a course up in a couple of days. One of the great things about having a blog and having an email list, you can actually test a course or pre-sell a course before you even offer it. This is one thing that wasn't possible 10 years ago and was something very few people were doing when I first started blogging. But if you have a blog, don't underestimate the amount of money that you can make launching a specific course for your core audience. Number nine is consulting with companies. This is something that I hadn't even thought about, and I actually had a consulting marketing company, but when I launched Millennial Money, I underestimated the number of companies that would want my opinion on their app or their investing service, and often a brand will reach out and offer me $2,000 for a one-hour Zoom call just to get my opinion or pick my brain on one of their product ideas. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars this way, and all I had to do was hop on a few different calls and give my opinion. If you become an expert or a known expert in your market or your niche through your blog, people are gonna find you when they Google the topic that you're an expert in. And so having a simple page on your contact page that allows people to reach out, letting them know that you do consulting is a great way to build that income stream. Number 10, are brand partnerships. So sometimes brands will wanna partner with you in a much larger way. I did a campaign with General Motors around their investing day and investing in GM stock where I did a series of live events with them online. I had them on my podcast. They actually had me up to their investor day conference in Detroit. I made some YouTube videos for them. That was all because they wanted to leverage my knowledge of their stock and reach my millennial audience, and so I created a larger brand campaign for them. Of course, that ended up taking hundreds of hours of my time, but ended up being one of the most profitable brand partnerships that I've ever had. As my brand has grown, I get more opportunities than I like to take because those brands often aren't a great fit for me, and now, in addition to deciding based on how much someone's willing to pay, I measure the opportunity based on how much fun it's going to be. So I really enjoyed going up and driving the new Hummer and checking out their facilities. So that added a lot more value to my life, even beyond the amount of money that I was paid. But it wasn't unrealistic early on in Millennial Money's days to get paid five to $10,000 to do a larger brand partnership. Just get creative. That's what brands want from you as creators. They wanna understand how to best engage with your audience and you're the one who can help them unlock that value. Number 11 are podcast sponsorships. You can make between $2,000 and $10,000 for a modestly successful podcast advertisement. I didn't know this when I first started my podcast and thankfully as podcasts have grown, those fees have only increased. If you have a blog on a particular audience, I encourage you to think about launching a podcast and then also integrating those podcast episodes into relevant posts. One of the things this did with Millennial Money is it significantly increased 
the amount of time that visitors spent on the website, correspondingly helping me increase my Google rankings. It takes a lot of work to create and publish a podcast, but there are so many ways that you can do it today and you can make more money than you likely think. Number 12 is you can make money through private or group coaching. Private coaching, of course, is one-on-one. -on -one, and early on with Millennial Money, I charged $300 for a one-hour call, which allowed me to add value to readers and help them with their side hustles and investing questions. But it also gave me an immense amount of information about the problems and challenges that readers had, which became instrumental in helping me create new content and eventually a course and writing a book. And so if you're just starting out and you have a growing audience and you're interested in coaching, I encourage you to let your audience know that you are doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. As your audience gets bigger, maybe you don't have time or the interest to work one-on-one, -on -one, that's when you can consider group coaching. For two years, I actually had a membership community where people could pay $37 a month and then participate in monthly group coaching calls with me. This allowed me to work with a couple hundred people at once and even though I couldn't do one-on-one -on -one calls, I could answer a large amount of questions for my audience and still add value while making money. Membership communities have become incredibly popular and can be insanely profitable, especially when you have a couple hundred members paying a recurring subscription fee every month. This has allowed many amateur bloggers to go full-time because they've built in a consistent form of revenue into their business. Number 13 is conference speaking. So as you become an expert and your blog and platform grow, there are brands and companies that will pay you to come speak to their audience. It's not unrealistic to get paid between five and $50,000 to show up and give a 30 or 45 minute talk. And oftentimes you'll get a first class flight and a hotel room included and you might be able to see a cool city. I did a lot of conference speaking early on in my journey but now I don't like traveling as much, and so I don't do very much of it. But it's certainly a way that you can monetize your platform and even turn your blog into a speaking business. Number 14 is your blog can lead to a book deal. This is one of the things that I really underestimated, but once I'd built an email list and an active readership, and I'd also spent thousands of hours writing about money, I knew a lot about money. And that was when I started getting more media mentions and ended up getting a book deal with Penguin Random House. I often encourage people to think very hard about why they want to write a book because most books sell less than a thousand copies. And if you don't really want to write a book, aren't worth your time. But if you write the right book for your audience, I can think of nothing better that can help you expand and grow your platform and lead to more money making opportunities. And number 15 are freelance writing opportunities. This is one of the things I didn't know about, but as your writing gets out there on a particular topic, brands start reaching out asking if you'll write for them. When I was starting out, I was writing about real estate investing and realtor.com actually reached out and offered me a thousand dollars a blog post to write for them. This completely blew my mind because here I was a blogger making hardly any money and a brand was gonna pay me $1,000 a post. That's something if you enjoy writing, there are many brands that will pay you to write on your particular topic. It's also a great opportunity to decide if you wanna turn your blogging business into a freelance writing business. And in fact, a majority of the writers that I work with now on Millennial Money and my other websites started as bloggers and then started freelance writing. So if you really love writing, you could turn that into an entirely separate business. Now I know we've covered a lot in this video and this is just 15 of the many countless ways that you can make money blogging. Blogging has been by far the most profitable and lucrative thing that I've done in my life. And if you wanna learn more about how to make money blogging, you can sign up for my free seven day email course. It's completely free and check it out below.